SNES Rock. This is the SNES Rock back with more Super Famicom games exclusive to Japan that are still playable even if they aren't in English. This is part two. I did part one a few months ago. Click here if you missed it. One thing I missed completely in that video was one of the best franchises of the 16-bit era, the Goemon series. In the US, the first game was released as Legend of the Mystical Ninja, which is a fantastic game with tons of gameplay variety. There are four others that didn't make it overseas. There's quite a bit of story here that will be lost, unfortunately, unless you can read kanji, of course, but these games are still functional as platformers. Ganbare Goemon 2, Kitaretsu Shogun Magunesu, is the first sequel to Legend of the Mystical Ninja, and it's exactly how you'd expect a sequel to be, really. It's like the first game in the series, but just more of it. There's a world map this time, a la Super Mario World, but yeah, there's more levels, more playable characters, and more variety. Like, riding a dragon, you gotta love that. The third game in the series, Shishijiro Kube no Karakuri Manji Katame, is a bit different, however, where there's one big overworld and you need to obtain items to unlock new parts of the map, kind of like Link's Awakening. This game is by far the longest and the most ambitious of the series. Ganbare Goemon Kirekara Doshu Bokuga Dancer ni Natawake. The fourth game in the series goes back to how the first two games were, more of a straightforward side-scroller with a lot of mini-games. This game is also one of the few SNES games to feature voice acting, which is pretty jarring. Lastly, there's also a puzzle game in the series, Sore Yuke Ebisumaru Karakuri Mairo Kieta Goemon no Nazo. A very simple game where you send your character from one end of the map to the other, adjusting arrows and collecting items along the way. The appeal of this game is in the multiplayer, where you'd race one another. This game does have a story mode, but it's very text-heavy and I wasn't sure what was going on. Moving on to other platformers, Umehara Kawase has gameplay reminiscent of Bionic Commando for the NES, where you use a kind of grappling gun to explore huge maps and find the necessary exit. The graphics in this one are also pretty crazy and remind me a bit of Earthworm Jim. Psycho Dream is a pretty good platformer where you can choose between Maria or Rio. The game kind of plays plays like a shoot-em-up with a similar kind of power-up system, it's well done and it's definitely worth playing. Next there's Pokohnian Hen Pokorin Adventure, which is very reminiscent of Doremi Fantasy, which I covered in the last video, so if you like that game, you'll like this one too. For fighting games, there is Yu Yu Hakusho 2, Kakuto no Sho. This game is pretty solid with some great anime sprite work here, so if you're burnt out on the usual Super Nintendo fighting games, give this one a shot. Battle Tycoon Flash Hiders SFX is a fighting game that allows you to customize your fighter's strengths, reminiscent of Robotrek, the same way you can customize attack, defense, and speed. These also adjust accordingly depending on how the fights themselves go. I wish more fighting games had this option. For beat-em-ups, Battle Zakei Den is one of my favorites I've found on the Super Famicom. This game is like Final Fight on crack, and with monkeys, and lots of moves and special abilities. You definitely gotta check this one out. Gurume Sentai Bariyaro is another solid beat-em-up on even more crack. This game is incredibly ridiculous in a way you'd expect from Japan, of course. It's kind of like Parodius, but for the beat-em-up genre. The sound gets annoying after a while, but it's still really entertaining. Iron Commando, Kotetsu no Senshi, is a beat-em-up with some run-and-gun styled elements. This game is really fun with lots of weapons and crazy bosses to fight, and it's actually somewhat long for a game of this nature too, with 10 levels. On to shoot-em-ups. Makuro's Scrambled Valkyrie is easily one of the best in the genre on either the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom, or on any other platform for that matter. It's absolutely worth tracking down, even if you don't usually like shoot-em-ups, because of all the different weapons and styles and the music and hijacking enemy ships and crazy bosses and just go play it, it's awesome. For other shooters, Flying Hero Buguiro no Daiboken is a fast chaotic vertical scroller with a bizarre cartoony art style, and there's Dezemon, which is worth checking out just because it's so different. It's a traditional vertical scroller combined with Mario Paint. You can mess with the music and design your own ship. There's no shortage of puzzle games on the Super Famicom that are easily playable. Its most notable, which I totally missed the first time around, is Mario and Wario. It's a very simple game, but it's addicting just to see how far you can get. It also makes use of the Super Nintendo mouse, which is a nice feature. Little Magic is a classic top-down puzzle game that's self-explanatory. The game does a nice job introducing new elements and gradually getting more and more difficult, and believe me, this game gets crazy hard after a while. Tetris Battle Guide then puts a new spin on the old Tetris formula, where the next piece on the display is first come first serve, between you and the computer or a second player, which makes for an interesting dynamic. Plus there's certain pieces that activate different spells depending on what character you selected. It's a very creative take on Tetris. Now we get into the adventure and RPG genre. For these games, you're best suited for a flash cartridge, so you're able to play these games translated to English on original Super Nintendo hardware. If you want more info on flashcards, there's a link in the description detailing the differences of each 
each flashcard and how they work. A big thanks to Ziggy587 from the Racket Boy forums for that link. Anyway, Clock Tower is a point-and-click adventure game, one of, if not the only, survival horror game on either the SNES or the Super Famicom. The story features Jennifer, an orphan child who's adopted by a rich family and, well, I don't want to spoil anything. You get the general idea of the tone of this game with the footage here. All I can say is that it's worth checking out to just to experience for yourself. On the other end of the spectrum, there's Marvelous Another Treasure Island, a top-down exploration game where a group of kids hunt for treasure. The game plays like a link to the past, but it reminds me of Secret of Evermore. It gives me that same kind of goofy vibe in a good way. Gunman's Proof is an adventure game with kind of a sci-fi Wild West theme, with meteor strikes, monsters, aliens, cowboys, and all that stuff. Again, with the top-down perspective, it does remind you of Link to the Past a bit. And last, we've got RPGs, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Terranigma, which is technically the sequel to Illusion of Gaia, although you certainly don't need to play that game first to enjoy Terranigma. The gameplay is diverse, dynamic, and engaging, with its vast array of attacks and spells. The story is well told, and the soundtrack is one of the best in the genre. Japan and Europe got this one, the US did not. But thanks to a flash cart, you can now play it yourself. Go check it out. I want to mention Chaos Seed. Someone just finished an English translation of this game very recently, so I haven't played that much of it yet, but it certainly looks interesting. Your party digs through a dying planet and attempts to channel energy back into it. Last but not least, there's two of the biggest games of the Super Famicom, Tales of Fantasia and Star Ocean. Both games have 48 megabits of data. If you're looking for story, these games have it in spades, but I wanted to give special mention to Star Ocean. I won't get too technical, but that game will only work with certain flashcards. Basically, you need to make sure your flashcard can handle up to 96 megabits. Retro Zone's SNES Power Pack and the SD2 SNES are the two that can do that. Tales of Fantasia got a US release on the Game Boy Advance, and Star Ocean is available on the PlayStation Portable, but I still wanted to make sure they were at least mentioned as Super Famicom games because they're both very good. Anyway, that's another 25 games right there. I hope to do another part 3 sometime soon. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day.